Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I've got some poblano peppers ready to harvest on my pepper plants. I want to show you two ways to use poblanos in the kitchen. We're going to make some tacos and we're going to make some stuffed poblanos. Okay, it's hot, it's summer, it's middle of July, peppers are in full production. And I've got some poblano peppers on the bush now. They're just about ready to be harvested. And I'm gonna show you today how to use this traditional Mexican pepper, um, the easiest way that you can use it. I like to use it as a garnish and a additive to tacos. You can also stuff them. Uh, the poblano pepper is a mild to medium heat pepper. They're actually not really that hot, but every now and then you get one that puts a little sting on you. But uh, it's a wonderful flavor pepper. When they get red and when you dry them, they become ancho peppers. And just a real versatile pepper with a nice big, uh, a big body. Except mine this year aren't that big. Let's go take a look. We've got some here. These are small. Normally they're about twice this size, but I'll take them. I don't know why they're so small. This variety is a hybrid. And I had hoped that we would have same kind of poblanos that I've had in the past but that's not what we're getting here these are kind of small but they're still poblanos this one is beginning to turn red and when they turn red and they're dried they're called ancho peppers this one also has a little bit of sun scald I'm gonna leave the rest of these on here to turn red These poblanos are a little bit small for stuffing. Normally you want them about twice this size so you can really get some meat in them. But we make jalapeno poppers and they're small. Why can't we stuff a little of this? Uh, these, uh, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try to stuff them, show you how you can do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the top right off, right through that seed cavity and I'm gonna get all those seeds out of there. Always inspect your peppers, make sure you don't have some hitchhikers down in there. You don't want that. Once you got your pepper hollow, that's ready to stuff. Okay, once again, let me show you this up close. I'm just gonna kinda cut around the crown here, just like so. And I'm gonna twist that out. And there's your seed pod, packet, whatever you wanna call it. And there inside, we've got a few seeds, just clear those out by hand. Now that's about two tablespoons of space in there. We can put some stuffing in there. This is the smallest one I'm gonna try. Since this is a small portion, I could eat all those, but say you had three per people as a side dish, it's a very small portion. I'm just gonna use one small onion and I'm gonna cut this up and dice it. I really should be using my chef's knife. I'm also gonna take one clove of garlic, you could use two, but I gotta live with my family, so yeah. Smash that garlic and peel it, and dice that up real fine. I'm going to use one tomato from the garden. I could use a can of tomato sauce or diced tomatoes or whatever you got, but I have an abundance of tomatoes that are fresh from the garden. I'm just gonna cut that core out of there and dice these up a little bit. Take that pith, I don't really care for that white pith right there. It's rough chop. And don't ask me for um, a recipe. What you're seeing me doing, that's the recipe. I'm kind of making it up as I go, just based on kind of, you know, cooking experience and, and what I like, you know. I like to be creative in the kitchen and put stuff in that seems to make sense based on kind of some of the things I've cooked in the past and some of the recipes I've had. So there we go, we've got a, a garden tomato. So like, that's great, isn't it? Man, I, I love that smell. You can stuff a poblano pepper with just about anything you like. Ground beef, sausage, uh, chorizo, uh, chicken, any kind of meat that you wanna mix together with any kind of vegetables that you think blend together and make a good flavor. I'm going for a chicken, kind of chicken enchilada type stuffing with the onions and the tomatoes the garlic and I'm going to use some uh, Mexican spices to go in there as well. 
and we're just going to bake these in the oven until they're nice and soft. Again, I'm winging it. I'm playing it by ear. I don't have a time for you to bake the things in the oven. Bake them until they're done, until you're ready to eat them. Uh, we might mix some cheese into there as well. If we had large peppers, we could cut them into boats and we could sprinkle cheese on the top. And that's kind of a classic way to eat a stuffed pepper. But we, we work with what we got and the garden gave us small poblanos this year. So we're gonna, we're gonna improvise. All right, we're gonna start with just a little olive oil in there. You could use vegetable oil if you want. Put our onions in there, get our fire on. I'm just gonna saute these down. I'm gonna add some corn, not the whole thing, probably about half. About half that can. Again, remember, we're cooking a small quantity here. I'm going to add my tomatoes. We want them to stew well, nice and soft. We want that to kind of be sort of a sauce. Now, I'm not going to add the garlic yet until we're near the end of cooking because I don't want to burn my garlic, and that's real easy to do with garlic. We want these tomatoes to virtually liquefy in here and our onions to be transparent. That's how I like them. If you like crunchy onions, do it your way. I'm going to take some cumin, just a little bit, sprinkle it on there. I'm going to take some chili powder and then sprinkle that on there as well. Now if it gets a little dry, you might want to add just a little dash of stock. Always use stock if you got it, rather than water. About this point, you want to preheat your oven to 350. There we go. It's getting a little dry. I'm just going to add a little dash or two of whatever stock I've got on hand. I've got some beef stock. Again, stock over water because it has flavor gives you a more complex end product. Now I'm going to lower my heat. It was about medium high. I'm going to lower it to medium and I'm going to put my chicken in. This has been diced up a little finer than before. Put that chicken in. We'll probably need a little more liquid in here as well. And at this point I'm going to add my garlic. All that garlic. Again, just little moisture in there to help cook all that down without burning. Remember, we're making a stuffing. This would be suitable for enchiladas. This would be suitable, suitable for uh, just about anything that you want to stuff that has a, a Mexican style flavor. Be suitable right on a tortilla as a taco. A little salt never hurts. All right, we have our stuffing, and I'm just going to take my pepper, stuff it. Real simple. And a lot of this, as we bake it, it'll probably fall out the top since we're doing these cone styles, unless you made yourself a little tinfoil cup to hold it up. I'm not doing that. I'm just cooking for me tonight. So we're just going to stuff these with this chicken, onion, corn tomato mixture. Make sure it gets way down in there. I'm using a small spoon because I've got small peppers. Now you can see this is just a small little pepper but we can get a lot of that in there, a lot of that stuffing. Now you could wrap these in tin foil and bake them like a potato and that would keep everything in there. Oven's ready. All right, we're gonna go for about 20 minutes up front and then we're gonna check on them. All right, it's been about 25 minutes. And I'm gonna turn these off and take it out. 25 minutes. Look at that. Everything stayed in. That's nice. Let's get some of these on a plate. And there's our end result. Look at that. Mostly they held together. 
I got the skins nice and soft. There'll still be a little skin on there when you have a chili relleno. But uh, there we go, a little Mexican rice and beans. And that's nice. Even though they're really small, and I was disappointed with their size, they turned out just fine. The easiest way to prepare these is to remove the skins by blistering them in a fire or broiling them and roasting them until the skins literally are charred. And then you'll put them in a plastic bag and let them steam themselves a bit. They'll get nice and soft and the skin will just slough off. Now you don't have to do this, especially if you're making a chili relleno. You just stuff them and bake them. But uh, this is an easy method for getting the skins off. Just get a high heat going and place your peppers right on them. Keep them turning and for too long you'll start seeing them blister up. This is what we're looking for, blistering. Literal blisters on there. Sometimes you'll have to kind of hold them in place. You can hear them popping. When they start looking about like that we're going to put them inside a Ziploc bag. That's what we want. Now we're going to let these sit in this bag and steam for about half an hour and they'll become nice and soft. Now that our poblanos have had time to sit in the bag for about half an hour, run some cold water and just use your thumb and see how that skin just sloughs off? So easy. Now you can see most of that skin comes off real easy like. Just peels right on off of there, just like that. Now here's the other part. Now that it's soft, you can just take the cap and open it just like that. And get rid of that little seed packet and then wash the rest of the seeds right out of there. There you go. Ready to slice this up and put it on some tacos. Rinse those seeds out. And if I just open it all the way up, you can see that's a nice green piece of soft pepper now with good flavor. These aren't really hot. They have good flavor though. They're flavorful. I'm just going to slice these into strips, just like so. That's ready to go in a taco. This is a very versatile pepper, very aromatic. Let's take a test. Oh yeah, there's no heat in that, but there's a lot of flavor. A little bit of heat coming through. Right at the end there. Isn't that usually how a pepper gets you? Right at the end. Sneaks up on you. Oh, that's good. Got slight roasty flavor since we put it in the flame. Yeah, that's good stuff. Look at that. All right, let's make some tacos. We're going to soften up some corn tortillas in a pan of butter. Just let those enjoy that bath for a few minutes on each side. Corn tortilla is kind of the more authentic type of taco you get at the taco trucks. And you double them up. See how they're starting to puff up like that? That's what you want to see. All right. We're there. All right, let's build our taco. I'm going to use some of our chicken that we cooked with the corn and the tomatoes. And that's going to be our base. <clears throat> now again, with these corn tortillas, they're not real hearty. They're prone to break up. So you don't want to stuff a corn tortilla taco too much. Just order a couple more if you're real hungry. That's about all we need there. And what we're going to do with our poblanos that we roasted is I'm going to take some and just lay them in there like this. This will give us that nice roasted poblano pepper. Yeah, that's going to be good. The more the merrier. I'm going to take a little hot sauce. A little more hot sauce. There we go. And you can use shredded cheese, but my wife stopped by our favorite Mexican food restaurant tonight and got some queso. 
I'm just going to drizzle that on top. So I suppose you could say this is more than just a poblano recipe, but it is how you can make good use of your poblanos to really kick tacos up to another notch. And so there we go. That is my poblano chicken taco. Looks good, huh? Let's eat. Alright, so I probably could have cooked it a little longer because the pepper itself is a little difficult to cut and slice. So, a little bit longer in the oven, maybe 35 to 40 minutes. Um, but I was getting a little bit worried about uh, charring the skin. But even if you char the skin, that's okay. So, a stuffed poblano. Let's take this middle section here because I see a nice bit of tomato. Some corn and chicken. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Let's try it. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. That's a little pocket of goodness right there. That's like a vegetable empanada. Or a vegetable tamale wrap. All that goodness inside tastes really good. Yeah, I finally found something I can do with my tiny poblano peppers. Next year I'll grow a different variety. Hopefully we'll get some big ones. And I can show you how to do a proper chili relleno. And uh, I also saw a guy who was uh, cooking eggs in them. So, yeah, there's lots you can do with these peppers. And I think they're delicious. Mmm. There's what we got. Let's have a chicken poblano taco. Real drippy. Yeah, there's a little bit of crunch from those poblano peppers, just a little bit, and you you get that sort of that that late coming, very slight tingling heat. Yeah, and that flavor, that smoky flavor, really comes through. And the chicken we cooked up, wow, that's really good. I'm really not a fan of chicken tacos, but I'd eat this all day long and twice on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And those corn tortillas really are holding up, nice and pliable. Mmm. Mmm. There's a real garden fresh flavor with that green poblano pepper in there. I like that. It could use a little more heat. I have just the thing. This is sriracha sauce. If you don't know about sriracha sauce, you probably live under a rock. This is a good uh, all-around chili sauce. It's used in all different cultures. And I'll just put a stripe of it on my taco here. Can you see that? There's what we got. I don't want to do a fail here and have this slide off. But let's fold that up and have a taste. Yeah, that did it. Just that little added stripe of sriracha sauce you can see peeking there. That red, that green of the poblano, that golden yellow of the cheese, the chickeny goodness in there, the real soft, pliable um, tortilla. Yeah, this is a good taco. Wow, this is really, really good. And even the occasional sweet pop of that corn that we roasted up in the pan with, with the onions yeah, I like this. I'll make this again. So there we go. Two ways to use poblano peppers. Real easy ways. It's a real versatile pepper. You can use it in, in uh, just about any kind of dish where there would be, uh, where it would call for bell peppers. It would just give that, that added kick, a little more flavor. Um, yeah, that was one of the best tacos I've ever had. Man, I'm surprised. I surprised myself with that one. So, you can see you can just kind of throw things together on the fly, just using a little bit of, of common sense, and you can make some good food. So, hey, thanks for joining us on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I hope you enjoyed this content. Hope we earned your subscription. Uh, follow us. we got some things coming up. We're going to talk about what I learned from my spring garden, and man, I learned a lot. That's coming up this coming week, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.